Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So lately, I have to admit that I have been struggling in college. I'm going to be talking about that a lot in this video because my experience in college this semester is kind of slowly changing my outlook on my art in both like good and bad ways. A couple of the good ways is that I'm now finding out my potential when it comes to 3D and 2D animation, but I will get more into that later. And some of the bad ways is that it's kind of bringing back my like imposter syndrome a little bit. And I'm almost having like um, a shift in style. So if you've seen the the thumbnail then you should know how the finished piece in this video looks but it kind of looks um a little different stylistically from my usual work and that's because some assignments in class has been encouraging me to study real life people lately and like portraits of real people so i've been doing studies on that and those usually end up having a more like realistic style, realistic proportions and stuff like that. And so my hand is kind of getting confused lately when I draw and I'm like, wait, like part of me wants to draw realistic because I'm kind of treating it like a study now, but then a part of me wants to do stylized like I normally do. And then it's just like confusing me. And so for this drawing, you can kind of tell that there is almost like a confusion there but anyway this drawing is actually for a class assignment in my core art studio class we had to design a character for the 1996 movie twister it has like a rather chaotic and colorful team of storm chasers and i ended up being inspired by my friend's last name uh lung and or lung not sure if i'm saying it right but i created a chinese storm chaser character and to be honest, you can probably tell, but it's kind of a low effort design in terms of costume. She's wearing very simple 90s clothing, like it's just a tank top and jacket and then khakis, but I wanted to implement my style into it. And so of course I gave her some primary colors, which I always love to use. And it actually plays into the movie a little bit because this there's this group of characters that are pretty chaotic and they wear colorful things instead of having a uniform and, and things like that. But I gotta say that my favorite part about her is actually her hair because she's outside all the time chasing tornadoes and being in windy weather and so of course her hair is going to be extremely messy and wispy and I messed around with actually giving her a tied up hairstyle but I just kind of like struggle with um, doing that in a, in a way that I like how it looks so I decided to just keep her hair down and make it super messy and it was it was honestly really really fun to draw the hair but for the most part I actually just kind of used this as a way to draw a fun portrait instead of actually dedicating a lot of time to designing it even though the prompt was to design a character I just ended up like honestly putting more time into the portrait than I did the actual design but um, this drawing that you see where she is sitting down on a truck, I actually ended up scrapping it and replacing it with a sketch that I did when I was drawing up the initial concepts for her. And for some reason, I just started to hate how it looked. So I took it out. And that's just like, you know, one of those things. I'll probably use it for something else maybe in the future, but it just wasn't, it just wasn't working out for my eyes, you know? But um, I got to talk about her a little bit once I got to class and we started presenting our projects. And I was a little nervous to like talk about my art because it had been a while since I actually did that in a classroom setting ever since COVID. But it turned out actually really fun. People received it well and it was also really fun to see what other people came up with. Before I get further into the video, I want to real quick thank today's sponsor, which is PacM. PacM creates custom packaging for you and your business, and I got to try out their thank you cards. I am so glad that I decided to outsource to them because I've saved so much time in creating thank you cards because I used to create my own at home 
I would print on some pretty cheap cardstock and I would cut them out myself. It would take forever even just to create like a hundred cards but now I have all these cards from Pack M, and it took like only two weeks and I don't have to worry about it for a really long time. Plus they are so much better quality than the cardstock that I was using. The colors are so much brighter and better. And the best part about these cards is that they are double sided so I can just stick my freebies onto the back and make my packaging even cuter and neater. I will be hosting a giveaway over on Instagram so be sure to check that out in order to get a chance to win a $50 gift card for Pack M. So please go check that out and be sure to check the description for all Pack M's links. Thank you once again Pack M for sponsoring this video. So for the past couple of weeks, I have actually been struggling in animation. I've never animated before. This is going to be my first semester learning animation and in my animation one class, I had to spin some shapes and like move them in space and honestly I thought it would be easy but boy I was wrong because I was using Procreate at first and I was getting real frustrated with working on the iPad so I actually upgraded to Capsido Paint X so I could animate on a program that I was already used to. And it got a little easier, but it was just like really difficult for me to wrap my head around how certain shapes should look when they're spinning. And I was really stubborn. I didn't want to use any references because I had to spin a cube, uh, a tube, a ball, and then a bean. And I, I tackled the cube first because I thought it would be the hardest. And it, it actually was the hardest. And um, I don't have like a dice. And so... I was using like pretty big like kind of boxes as references in real life but I wasn't taking videos of myself and I was just really struggling. That was like a really super rough like first draft that I had but by the time that I upgraded to Clipsio Paint X I finally stopped being stubborn and I used 3D animation as a reference because I also Kind of learned a little bit how to 3d animate in maya and so i just got a simple cube in maya and i i animated it and i used that as a reference and i don't know is it kind of cheating feels like cheating but i don't know because like my my professor says it's good to use references and so i'm thinking that i'm just being resourceful instead of cheating so whatever right but I was fairly satisfied with the end product and let me see if I could actually quickly show it here a few loops but had a lot of fun with the tube, the bean I ended up using a stuffed animal as a reference and the ball was pretty easy to be honest but it's just like a really quick and small animation but I just struggled through it so much and I'm just like thinking I don't know like am I am I going to be good at animation? Am I going to be bad at it? Am I going to hate this? And it kind of makes me want to do more of it. And now that I've upgraded to Capsule Paint X, I think, I think I'm going to try to animate a lot more on my own time outside of assignments. Because now I'm recognizing that there's a lot of potential here with what I can do in animating my normal art. And I think I'm going to experiment with doing blinks first to start with. And outside of 2D animation, I'm also taking a 3D animation class where so far we've just been learning how to do 3D modeling and texturing in Maya. But I think by the end of the semester, we're gonna go into how to rig and animate also. But that class is like making me realize just how fun it is to model and it's making me see like the potential in learning how to model an entire room so that I could like eventually use it as a, a reference for a background and an illustration. And there's a lot of things in 3D modeling that I could utilize in my art because I used to be so scared of touching it. Um, the first time I ever 3D modeled was back in my second semester of college where I had to do like a diorama of a museum. And it was around the time where we switched to online classes in or during covid in 2020 
And so our professor was allowing us to 3D model instead of like doing something in real life. And so I 3D modeled a museum space in Blender and my brain was overloaded with all this information that I like, I had no idea what I was doing, but I managed to do it. And I was thinking, I never want to do this again because it was such like a bad experience. Just depending on YouTube tutorials on Blender. And you're not only learning something new in terms of 3D modeling and how it works, but I, you're also learning an entirely new software. So you, like your, your fingers are confused. Like my fingers were still trying to do like uh, clip to paint shortcuts and it like I was just so confused, but now because I'm learning it in a class, I'm like, wait, I can kind of do it. Like my hands are getting used to the muscle memory of Maya shortcuts and I'm like, okay, okay. Like I understand how to make a table now and it's the same principle in making other things. So maybe I can make this work. And so far we've only been modeling objects. So we haven't gone into modeling characters yet, but I'm really interested in that because if I can 3D model my characters, I can kind of have a better grasp on how to do turnarounds in 2D concept art and all that stuff. And I could just, I just think it, it would be cool to like model my characters, you know? And it's just been a whole lot of fun this semester learning all these new things, but it's also been really frustrating um, because I've just been learning a lot about myself in terms of how I view art and maybe different directions that I can go in art that I've never really thought about. I'm just glad that I have some great professors who can help with that. And I'm one of those people that like really go on rate my professor to make sure that I get a good professor that I won't hate. I mean, I also don't agree with everything they say about art, but they do teach very well and I'm learning a lot. If you follow me on Twitter, you've seen me tweet about like this existential crisis that I've had with the animation industry, like learning more about it. And I've always been a person who has just not really been totally interested in actually going into the industry. And I've been struggling with this fact that most professors are here to cater towards students who are going into the industry. And so people like me, are kind of left in a dust to fend for ourselves a little bit and it's easy to feel invalidated when um, professors just talk down anime you know like what if you have an anime art style and your, your professor is just talking trash about it like what are you supposed to do even though there's so much potential in an anime art style and a lot of directions that you can go with it that is still profitable outside of the industry. Um, but I'm not gonna get too much into that. I, I already talked about it too much that I, that I wanted, but being in these professors' classes honestly inspires me to make more tutorials because despite all those things about like the industry that I just talked about, I am really learning a lot from the way that they instruct. I've, I've been motivated to also kind of hone my instructing skills. And so I actually did kind of a trial run of instructing in my Discord server. If you're interested in my Discord server, it's in the description. Although I will warn you, it's pretty dead right now. Uh, I'm not a very good server owner. I'm not um, active in there, nor am I in a lot of Discord servers, to be honest. But um, this event that I did recently, it was like literally yesterday, actually. It was super, super informal, but it was basically a overpainting workshop. I, I tried to do something small where I provided some line art to people who didn't have their own. And um, I basically just talked over my process and explained overpainting to around seven or eight people who were able to make it. And it, it was like a draw with me or a draw along type of thing where I was sharing my screen. I encouraged everyone else to share their screens. It was honestly really fun. We just colored some line art together. I explained a lot of things about the process to them. And I'm pretty um, proud to say that I think I helped a couple of people understand overpainting a little bit more. It lasted a little over two hours and it was really, really fun. Um, I kind of just like 
felt like a, a professor in a Zoom class almost like when you um, or like like when the professor talks or they ask questions to the class and then no one answers it because everyone was just muted. It wasn't too awkward actually, you know, people were typing in chat and I can tell that they were in the zone, which is why they probably weren't like responding, but that's a good thing, you know, when people are in the zone while rendering their pieces. And by the end, there was actually a good amount of variation in how people approach coloring the same line art. Um, and even when overpainting it, you know, like there was a lot of changes that happened, even though they were following along with what I was doing. And it just, it warms my heart to know that I helped people. I'm really looking forward to doing something like that again in the future. I didn't have an outline or anything or a lesson plan. I just kind of um, had a small list or small bullet points in a notepad literally and so I kind of just like winged it all but um, I hope to kind of make YouTube videos like that one day or just do more small events like that in the future. I just need to really figure out the best way to do them because I do have classes and everything. I'm running a small business and I just won't have too much time to do fun stuff like that but I mean like I've said in the past that I wanted to stream before and I still haven't. And so just don't count on a lot of these things that I say. I'm that type of person that says like, I want to do this and that, but then like I never get to it. But yeah, with streaming, um, I know how to do it. I've streamed on Twitch before, but honestly, I'm just kind of too lazy to set it up for YouTube. And I can always stream on Twitch, but I think it would be better to do it on YouTube because that's where my audience already is. And I'm also just too lazy to set up stream alerts. Um, my streams has always been like very, very informal, but um, yeah, when I think about it, the, the setup just seems like a huge chore that I don't wanna, I don't wanna do. But if I did stream, I think it would probably be while I do some animation work, maybe while I do some college homework, if it involves digital art. A lot of my animation homework I do on Clip Studio Paint now because I did upgrade and uh, I don't like record it or anything like that. And there's also been a project that I've been doing where I do some sketch pages, like digital sketchbook stuff that I could probably do on stream. But so yeah, don't count on the streams too much. I'll most likely just be um, trying to hang out in my Discord a little bit more. The art channel there is pretty active, but other than that, it's pretty dead. So, you know, if you want to join, you can. Just don't count on it being some amazing server, okay? But just going back to the whole animation thing, I'm pretty excited to just do more personal projects when it comes to animation. And also just more personal projects in general. Lately, I've been trying to study Catherine Zeta-Jones and trying to get her likeness, um, but also in a stylized version because I can probably get her likeness when it comes to realism but I don't, I don't want to draw in the realism all the time and I've, I've been struggling with that because I have this historical romance story that I'm working on for myself and I want to use Catherine Zeta-Jones when she was in her prime as the face reference for my main character and it's been very difficult. I also want to get into studying more men, more masculine faces so that I could um, work on designing my male characters and developing them a bit more. I I got one comment that asked me if, um, or, or that asked me to draw Jasper in the next video. And I'm like, oh God, like I should probably do that, but I just don't feel confident enough. And I, I need to be a little strict with myself in studying a bit more because I'm never gonna be confident if I don't practice. So I, I need to practice and train my eye to recognize the the good methods there are in um, drawing male faces or masculine faces. But yeah, this video is gonna be a little short because I just haven't had a lot of time to, you know, do what I wanna do. I wanna do, I, I wanna do a bigger project soon, another character design. So I just haven't had a lot of time to actually sit down and draw and record myself working. So I apologize for the short videos, but hopefully there will be more in the future. I've also just been getting really stumped by the YouTube algorithm. 
it, it kind of feels like I'm doing something wrong because my videos haven't been doing great lately, but I know you guys are still very supportive. I, I really do just think it's the, the YouTube algorithm not showing my videos to you, but uh, we'll, we'll get through it. And so, yeah, that is all I have for today. I will see you all next video. Goodbye.